Can I tell you a story? Can I tell you a story? Right, so I used to play in a hotel in London called the Chorus Hotel Hyde Park. And it's owned by a guy called Dr. Koo, not the evil magnet from James Bond. He owns Laura, do you know the company called Laura Ashley? So he, he's the chairman, owner, major shareholder. He saw me playing piano in a, and he owns hotels and he owns a bank and he owns, I don't know what he owns. Also, he's a Malaysian guy. And he's, I was playing David Gates, who comes to town to play a lab, baby, it's the guitar man. You know that song? I was playing that in a shopping center in London called Westfield. And he walks by with his entourage, which I didn't know was lawyers, bodyguards, his wife was with him. And he stands in front and he's clapping and enjoying it. And he comes over to me afterwards and he says these words. He goes, go to hotel over there. We're in a shopping center. I'm playing a piano. You're obviously a mad person who's, you know, not normal. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. And he goes, damn, go to Hosho. So these people start to come up. They give me an address to go to. And they say, go to this hotel. And I think, well, maybe the guy's on holiday and he's having a private function and he wants me to play at it. So I go to the hotel and I arrive at the hotel. There's a stretch Rolls Royce outside. I've got my wee white van. There's a stretch. Hold on, the phone's ringing. It's Dr. Koo. Hello? So, right. Can I finish the story? Here we go. Listen, I've already finished. It's a great story. I go in and Andrew Hollett is the general manager of the hotel standing at the door like this, you know, and I come in. Oh, hello, how are you? And he goes, we go down to the basement where there's a piano in a restaurant which is called Bel Canto, where the opera stars of tomorrow. Uh, all that stuff, you know, while you're eating. God, stop that, you know. Anyway, so they do that entertaining way, but there was, it was closed, the restaurant, so they opened it up and I played the piano for about an hour and a half for him and his entourage. And eventually I said, look, what's going on? Why am I here? And he sits me down and he goes, uh, he says, we're going to get you into, we're going to get, I own the hotel, I own lots of hotels, we're going to get you in on the lobby upstairs, but we don't have a piano. And I knew that the guy who was the general manager was, who later became my friend, but at that time, his nose is out of joint. He, I'm being imposed. This, this guy who has his whim, every whim answered, is coming to the general manager of his hotel and saying, this is your piano player. Now, if I was a general manager, I'd be thinking, oh, nightmare. Do you know what I mean? So he goes, so in comes the, so I, I knew that I could lose this just as quickly as I got it. So I, thank God, I was fast on my feet. I said, if you get that piano in for tomorrow, I'll do the first night free. He says, but I, I said, but I bet you can't do it. He goes, oh, I bet you I can. So he, get in, he gets in he's, and he gives me a price. A good, no offense to anybody who's Asian or well, Malaysian. Anyway, so he gets, he gets the piano in, and they give me a really good price. And I played three hours a night. I played four hours a night for four years. It started off three hours a night, then it went to four hours a night, and I was there for three years. The way I lost the job was fascinating as well. But I'll tell you the funny part. So he goes like this. He says to me, Westfield was the shopping center where I was playing. And he goes to me, do we, play, do we pay you more? Do we pay you more than that place where I saw you playing? He asked me. Now, the truth is, they didn't pay me. They let me play because you would pick up, fa like I would get a, an engagement party in Sussex. So people would see me playing in this, because it was DKNY and Gucci. It's a fancy shopping center with a big grand piano. So you, I, they didn't, it was, you would, you would almost pay to play there because you're only gonna meet wealthy people who can take you out to their place to do a job for them. So he says to me, do we pay you more than them? The way he asked the question, I went, yes. You know what I mean? And just left it at that. And then he goes, uh, do you believe in anything? I said, well, I'm Jewish. Does that mean I don't have the job anymore? And he goes, he goes, no, got a good friend Jewish, good friend Jewish. So that was that. Now, we're going to jump three years later. The new marketing manager for the group, Dr. Koo is going through a divorce with his wife. Since I got in the job because I was his, because he brought me in, I could do no wrong. So over the years, there was posters in the street of me posters on every floor of the hotel of me, posters in the elevator of me, <laughs> the whole place, a video screen running above the reception desk of me playing, <laughs> right? Because every time I said yes to somebody, nobody would say no to me <laughs> because I would go to Dr. Koo if they said no to me and say, but I want it. And Dr. Koo would go, make it happen, you know? <laughs> so it was fast. It was funny, all sorts of stories in the hotel, but I 
sort of maybe pushed it a wee bit far. As the years build up, we get to the point where you think, whose hotel is this? This is totally true. So in comes a guy called the, mar a, a guy, I can't remember his name, he's a mar the new marketing manager for the group. Are you with me? This is how I lost the job. Because it's hard to lose a job that, when you're that, right? Okay, I did that, I managed to do it. And it's, it's a lesson in life uh, of some kind. So I, um, a lady called Nemo, who was the human resources manager, it was a big hotel, let me know that the guy walking past the piano was Nemo, was, a, was the new um, marketing manager for the group for the whole of the country. He'd been sending me emails saying, we're going to get rid of all your posters because I want to put posters up of all the other hotels in the country. I would try and say to him, well, can we wait till I speak to Dr. Koo? And he would never respond to my emails. So he knew to sidestep me. You follow? He knew to put me to the heat, to avoid me, and I would never, could never get to him. One day, he's walking past the piano with Nemo, who was a friend of mine, who was the, the lady who worked in the hotel. She goes, that's him. So I get up off my piano chair and the security cameras in the whole place, and I whimsically, as I learned from my dad, funny, whimsical stuff, which sometimes works, but sometimes if you get it wrong, doesn't. I pretended to strangle him. I said, you're the guy trying to take my posters away. Sure enough, called into the office, you've been, you've assaulted and you've tried to strangle this guy. I said, of course I didn't. You can see by the videos that I didn't. And they said, well, let's have a look. So we go to the bowels of the hotel and they put it up on the screen. And I take out my phone and my camera and I film it while it's happening. And I say, and then the general manager sees me filming it. He gets annoyed. Sure enough, they wanted rid of me anyway. Um, and that's how I lost it. 